jiný živá. <laughs> I'm happy to add to the stories of this morning. My personal story began when I joined IBM Watson a little over five months ago from the weather company. I was thrilled by this opportunity to lead our AI technology because I've always believed we should spend our time thinking with technology and not about it. And for the four years prior to that, I was the head of the weather company where we mapped the atmosphere much as Google and others had mapped the Earth. The atmosphere is complicated. It is 100 kilometers thick, which is not very much. In fact, we are closer to outer space today than we are to Kyoto. But we had to manage that through IoT. The way we manage the understanding of the atmosphere is through sensors. And as, as we began today with Masa-san talking about this vision of IoT, it is, of course, where our vision of Watson begins as well. And what we did with IoT was to be able to map that atmosphere, which is always moving, and understand what it meant for over 3 billion latitude-longitude combinations on Earth. And this is how you've all come to get your weather forecast in your car and on your watch and on your phone. We built this platform, which connected already to billions, and I heard soon to trillions, of devices, cars, planes, agricultural fields, all the places where people make life-changing decisions based on the atmosphere. And that platform is now owned by IBM. And I came with it to continue on this progress of making just from that individual platform over 26 billion individual forecasts every day to almost every smartphone on Earth. When we rebuilt weather, we did it with machine learning. And we made advances in 20 months that surpassed all the advances of the prior 20 years. So what I would also say to you is this movement to AI and this movement to AI enabled by IoT will accelerate at a very fast pace the degree at which we can make advances. In only five months on the Watson team, I've already come to realize that the promise of man and machine working together in the field of AI is incredibly exciting for all of us, whatever industry or profession you're in. Why is that? Just as the steam shovel was invented to help us solve the problem of scaling human capabilities, Artificial intelligence, or we might act more accurately say, for the time being, augmented intelligence, enables us to use invisible data. And what I'm excited about uh, in this case is that so far, in this past phase of the internet, we worked with visible data, the 20% of the world's data that's already on the internet, and you can search for it. It's structured. 80% of the world's data is invisible. The data to be collected by devices, by images, satellites, et cetera. This added data is our currency starting today because of AI. And you and we together can use this data currency to scale the expertise of so many new professions, whether they be doctors, researchers, financiers, dress designers, engineers, and lawyers. Unlike traditional computing system of the prior phases, this new phase of IoT and AI allow new systems like Watson to first learn at scale, to bring unprecedented amounts of data into a system. Secondly, to take that learning and reason, reason with a purpose, solve hard problems, predict the future. And thirdly, 
interact with us in natural ways. And these traits of learning, reasoning, and interaction are the traits of this new cognitive era of computing, which are gonna move us all beyond what was the programmatic era. And today, what I'm hoping to do is get you all excited by just sharing a few examples. And we have thousands already of Watson at work in the world, but I'd like to share a few with you today. So what exactly are we doing with Watson? We're building out these technologies in four areas. The first is deep, human-like sensory capabilities. First in language. And we don't just do machine translation, we really learn language natively, including Japanese. Number two, vision. And number three, speech. And as was said earlier, number four, we don't simply want our machines to be smart. We want our machines to have emotional intelligence. It's one of the common traits that we share with SoftBank and why SoftBank and IBM Watson have joined forces to do this together. We are developing together ways in which our machines can interpret emotion, tone, and personality. Today, Watson is a set of services. They're open for the world to use. They're open for you to use in different combinations for different outcomes. We've opened these technologies to developers, whether they are startups or in businesses, to researchers, to inventors, and to entrepreneurs, because we want to power your big ideas, and we want to create new products that collectively transform our lives. It's such an honor to be close partners with SoftBank in this endeavor. And I'm excited to tell you that we will soon introduce another Watson data center here in Japan in partnership with SoftBank to make it even easier for us to all work together. I wanna to share some examples in four areas. One is personalized health, a second customer engagement, decision making, and mobility. So first of all, how does Watson extend our ability to make more personalized health decisions? We work with a company called Under Armour, and I don't know how many of you are already wearing fitness tracking devices like the one I'm wearing from Under Armour. Under Armour's app is my body's dashboard, and every day I get insights powered by Watson. It collects my data, and it provides a 24-7 view of my progress. It can't make me exercise, that's up to me, but it can tell me why it would help me. It analyzes all of my data and provides a single view of the daily progress with personalized insights and recommendations. All of us who are wearing the Under Armour devices powered by Watson can compete with each other. We can compare against other people that are our same age. And already, there are 4.5 million people my age using the app. So it's a good data set. I can see how long an average workout is, or I can see how long someone like me is sleeping down to the minute. A second example, which I'm very excited about, is with a, a client uh, called Medtronic. They're a health solutions company, and um, one of the women who uses this product gave me a, a really profound story. Um, this woman has two children, and the, the children are small, ages two and five, and sadly, they are both uh, fighting diabetes. The young mother said, there's been no vacation from diabetes. For their lives, she's gotten up 10 times every night, every 45 minutes or so, in order to measure her children's blood glucose levels. She needed to do that to be safe. She struggled with diabetes every minute of every day. And she feared that the life of her children was going to be under this dark cloud forever. But imagine what happened when that family had insight 
to diabetic incidents before they happened. So Medtronic, in partnership with Watson, is developing an app that's a daily assistant for her and for all people with diabetes. I had the pleasure of just presenting this at the American Diabetes Association in New Orleans, and the pilot was amazing. We took 600 past patient cases, captured that data. Again, it's IoT. These are um, cognitive analytics connected to insulin pumps and glucose monitors from Medtronic. And with that data, Watson was able to predict hypoglycemia or extreme low blood pressure up to three hours in advance of the onset, early enough so that a person with diabetes could take action and prevent a potentially dangerous health event. And that helps a mother sleep at night. That's real progress. We also see innovation happening in the area of how our clients engage with customers. And trust me, customer expectations have never been higher. 80% of the consumers who switch their loyalty to another company believe that the company they were working with could have and should have done something to retain them. And Watson wants to help with that. One example is the North Face. North Face built a Watson-powered shopping assistant that helps engage you in question and answer conversation to figure out exactly what you need, particularly when you're shopping on your mobile device versus in the store. The North Face sells 350 jackets with different weights, styles, and production levels. So let's say you want a new spring jacket. The app will save you from the usual online shopping experience of scrolling through pages and pages of jacket images and help you find exactly the right one for you in a common conversation. Let's talk about Hilton. Hilton has 4,600 hotel properties worldwide, and it's critical that they deliver a consistent experience. To help this guest, they took now, <laughs> renamed it Connie. Uh, Connie is short for Conran Hilton, the founder of uh, Hilton. And they created the first Watson-enabled robot concierge in the hospitality industry. Connie has studied up in each of these locations on what's going on locally in terms of attraction, where to eat, and the hotel features and amenities. The more guests interact with Connie, the more Connie learns, adapts, and approves his recommendations. And here, in Tokyo, we can get expert advice from the Peppers working at Mizoho Bank, powered by Watson. And just this week, in America, a retailer called Macy's has launched a Watson-powered experience to guard shoppers. Here again, Watson trained on Macy's own data set, and then Macy has the opportunity to learn and apply those shoppers' feedback. So let me turn to decision making. We live in a world where there is rarely a single right answer to the choices we make. Many of us cannot keep up with all the information available to us. If I just look at medicine, doctors would need to spend 160 hours a week reading all the new publications that are relevant to their field of study. It's impossible. But by learning the language of our professions, cognitive technologies can help. For one example, the price of oil rigs has tripled since 2003. A deep water rig now costs between 600 million and 650 million US dollars to build. It's a big decision. Woodside is a major energy company in Australia, and they're working with Watson Technology to tap the wealth of expertise, insight, and knowledge across their entire organization and stored in all their data and all their files. So the smallest engineering decision for Woodside is in the millions of dollars. So getting it right is key. Being able to 
look at any decision and compare it to all the prior decisions means that they have valuable knowledge developed during every project. And now they can share that expertise across years and even decades. It also means that it's stored in house of Woodside. When a Woodside engineer leaves the company, often the knowledge leaves with them. So this way, they're able to make sure that they're not just reworking old problems. They're being able to actually keep the knowledge inside the company. Watson today is being used to analyze about 200 million pages of technical documents and about 30 years of institutional knowledge. So any engineer at Watson, or any engineer at Woodside can ask Watson questions and get confidence-weighted answers based on what's happened before. And I guess best of all, Watson never retires, Watson never sleeps, it just continues to learn and improve. I don't, I'd now like you to meet Ollie. Ollie is a self-driving cognitive bus and it can carry up to 12 people. It's equipped with some of the most advanced vehicle technology, including the ability to learn from high volumes of transportation data produced by over 30 sensors, again IoT, embedded throughout the vehicle. Here's Ollie. So these vehicles, these Ollies, are going to be on National Harbor streets. And all summer long, we're testing and improving and engaging different data that we're pulling out of the vehicles. The sensor set on this vehicle allows us to be able to feed data to Watson and feed data back to Ollie to make life more enjoyable. The goal is to have 30 vehicles on these streets by Christmas to be able to connect all of the sights and the sounds that are going around from living to entertainment to exercise and to work uh, is really what will make National Harbor's transportation ecosystem come alive and make it more enjoyable to get around on a daily basis. So I would say we've all been watching some of what's going on with driverless cars. Buses are a good place to start. They, they can learn a route. It's the same route. But the passengers who get onto Ollie can also interact conversationally with this bus while traveling from point A to point B. They can talk to Ollie about topics like how the vehicle works, where they are going, and why Ollie is making specific driving decisions. Watson helps Ollie understand and respond to the passengers' questions as they enter the vehicle including, Ollie, can you take me downtown? Or a specific vehicle function? Or how does this feature work? Or all the children say, are we there yet? Let's look more closely at Japan. Watson is working in Japan today. Forum Engineering is a Japanese company that focuses on temporary staffing. They're using Watson to match Japanese engineers to the most appropriate job posting. Their solution is called Cognitive Staffing, and here to tell us more is their CIO, Masahiro Takeuchi. Welcome, Masahiro. So, hey, congratulations on your launch of Cognitive Staffing in April. Yes. I was here then, Thank so you. I saw the launch. But we'd like to know more about the solution. Yes, I'll be speaking in Japanese. In Japan, we have about 600,000 engineers, manufacturing engineers and technicians working here in this country. And um, their job postings and their experience uh, will be digitalized using cognitive staffing and Watson technology. And by digitalizing such information, we'll be able to find the best job postings for these engineers. So it's a, a platform, and this is uh, cognitive staffing. Results, what results did you see? Hi. Uh, well, as of April 1st, uh, we launched the service, and um, We use it for staff assignment and allocation. And when we use Watson, 
we call this uh, started by Watson and uh, accounted by Watson. And uh, we have about 300 of such cases every uh, month. But after we started the service in April, uh, the accuracy was about 15 percent. And uh, this grew to about 35 percent in May and by June to f more than 50 percent, which is a phenomenal number, I think. And as of yesterday, the number has already increased to 64 percent. And that is matching using Watson. We were able to assign our clients to our customer site, 64 percent using Watson. Well, going forward, we're thinking of three possibilities. One would be well, dispatching of laborers is a very labor-intensive business model because uh, if we can use cognitive uh, technology for uh, various use cases, uh, we can uh, change this uh, to a, a very, very energy-saving and staff-saving types of uh, business process. Also, uh, we can uh, hope to achieve and, or to establish this platform, uh, cognitive staffing, as an established platform for this purpose. And we also want to expand our services uh, to overseas as well. Hi, Thank, Thank you, you for sharing your experience with Watson. Yeah. Hi. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very much. One of the other things we're really excited about is Watson learning to see and how this can be applied in many industries. So I'd like to welcome my colleague from here at the Tokyo Watson Labs, Kaori Nanva. So welcome, Kaori. Hello. My name is uh, Kaori Namba of Fortune Technology Development at Japan IBM. And I'm very happy to be able to share with you IBM's initiatives using Watson Visual Recognition. Watson Visual Recognition will extract information and insight from images, which is a very unique and powerful uh, technology. Now, how can we teach the computer how to recognize these images? Uh, let's see how. Uh, this is Watson looking at a picture of the Rainbow Bridge based on the recognition protocol it already learned. Watson uh, will analyze the image and will determine the class and category which matches uh, the features. And in this photo, it's nighttime, uh, there is lighting, and also the fact that the uh, photo was taken in a city area was recognized. Next, we want Watson to learn that this is a landmark, the Rainbow Bridge, and we need two steps to do this. And first, we will feed Watson the set of images of landmarks that we want it to recognize to learn. And then uh, we will send new images uh, to Watson uh, to test to see if it can recognize the landmark in the photo. This time, we prepared 50 images. This is called a training set. And we chose all of these images and photos for Watson to learn. By capturing more images into the training set, we can further improve accuracy. Now, when the learning process ends, then based on the pre-learned recognition method, we can feed Watson new images that have never seen to see if it can analyze it. So in this um, time, and then we have uh, then already to uh, look for uh, the um, the patterns, which is ultimately express the uh, complicated concepts and from adjacent and the, uh, the the pixels. So as a result, and the Watson and learned some uh, characteristic of uh, Rainbow Bridge, and then the and this, and it's still, uh, then you have uh, some of the room of it. It's a 64%. So um, in the computer, is going to uh, recognize it as uh, much as um, possible to just uh, make it learn as the uh, representation of the landmark. So as you know, and this application utilized, the te technology utilized application is infinite. So just um, uh, this is new and then for very unique method is utilized and to just make the revolution possible and across the boundary of the industry. 
and so on to uh, no, so solve the uh, climate issue. So uh, uh, let's look at um, some of the examples of the uh, use case of a satellite image. So in this case, a use case is 7,600 liter utilized per day, and which is uh, the um, the cons consumption of the water of. Uh, twice as much as others. So this is American um, persons. So uh, to have some of a task for this American person to um, save the uh, water. So Omni Earth um, Company um, have the uh, some of the cognitive um, analysis and then for the resource and then for the take uh, the action individually. And uh, here is a Phoenix in Arizona and East Evans Drive 4402 property is looking for. As you can see some colors on the map. So the pink is a solar panel plus swimming pool in the house. And then blue shows and with the pool, however, without uh, the solar panel. So and this, um, and then for the house is already retrieved. And then also this is a paved and um, very um, a wide area and one fifth are covered by uh, the, uh, the trees. And of course, uh, the human being can do uh, some analysis, but utilizing Watson, Omni Earth um, and can and have the, and, um, the image processing as uh, quick as 40 times as usual and for manual work. As you can see, uh, the water resource tub and then for the uh, visual and then also the people, and then for the prediction of the water usage, and then some of the information analyzed from the landscape. And the, what kind of the landscape, what is surrounded on the, on the land, and then also from the water usage right now, and they're going to predict how much of the water is going to be utilized now. And then they can highlight uh, the non-water uh, saving company uh, for the household. And uh, Omni Earth is not just focusing on the uh, the solar panel and then the pool, swimming pool. So attribute and some of the list of the attributes which collected by Omni Earth. So the damage index is um, for the roof. Uh, like a damaged area, probably an insurance company may be uh, interested in this. So ultimately, for uh, the water um, saving achievement um, can be uh, utilized and for the express by value. And California State, uh, in the past uh, the 10 months of 2015, and they um, just order to reduce the water usage by 25%. So uh, Omni Earth, um, is, uh, they have already do a due diligence of the uh, California, and then um, they can possibly to um, uh, reduce or not. So the Omni uh, Earth platform um, is connected to Watson Visual and Recognition Technology and to uh, do the uh, data analysis. And then, and of and then uh, the Watson's learning the method for uh, the, uh, the learning. So uh, thank you very much. Visual recognition is also at work in the healthcare industry. Media Mart is another Japanese company which is using visual recognition and Watson's retrieve and rank service. Here to tell us more is CEO Keita Tara. Welcome. Hello again. Hello again. Good. So when I was here, you had just won the Watson Hackathon in March. Tell us about the solution you built. This, that it was the uh, second hackathon and award and I'm going to talk about and for uh, this um, and a cardiac and MRI diagnosis and as assistance service. So and for the uh, data of the cardiac MRI and the diagnosis and they are going to have the data and of the and and a cardio, uh, cardiac disease, so and 1,500, and then for and and for 150,000 um, patient can be seen. However, that an eight percent. So um, because of the doctor and then some of the engineer and uh, lacking, so that's why they cannot utilize it. So towards that service, 
you know that well for and they started to have um, Sekiretsu, Sekineto-san, and then they have some of the, uh, Tsutomu, Mr. Tsutomu Sekine has uh, some of the, um, the uh, some uh, um, surgery of the heart. So uh, Dr. Terashima, and then uh, Terashima, and then they have uh, some of the uh, diagnosis are uh, going to be utilized for all MRI all over the world. So that's the uh, uh, development that has been done. So, um, what business progress have you seen since you solved this problem? And then after Hackerson, of course that the software has already developed and then and to just to make a high and accuracy, that is a phase. So right now, for the 80%, for the cardio uh, and artery disease, and then also and for for every um, week, and then we put the data, and we just get uh, uh, the feedback from the doctor. So and then we have um, uh, we try to just to, um, pursue for um, this uh, diagnosis with this what 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 zone. So 15 million and people. And then we have a uh, cardiac uh, arrest, um, and they, they lost their life. So, and we can save the uh, patient of a cardiac arrest. Progress, but it's just the beginning. How do you plan to extend your cognitive business together with Watson and SoftBank? There are two things that are in my mind. The one, is uh, and already had and uh, talked to the MRI manufacturers, and in the case of um, uh, some of the uh, for the survey, uh, some of the myo uh, data inflection, and then and then also uh, dementia as well. So and in the pepper and then also Watson are utilized and for dementia and for the nursing of dementia patient. Um, that we can utilize it. So in a case of a cerebral infraction, and in this case, I would like to uh, produce uh, some of the uh, robot for nursing and the patient. For, for SPSS or by IBM, that's IoT robotics and AI and some of the analytic engine that we have um, the sold. So, uh, so in this case, this uh, software technology is one of the core. And then for AI or for all the uh, business wanted to be started. So easy to understand and also maybe um, this kind of the startup fund service that we can start, uh, we can make you start. And so that I ask uh, David Sun and to just the uh, launches as um, soon as possible. So just the startup service are going to be released because of the demand of David Sun. Thank you. I especially want to wish you good luck with SoftBank World's Hackathon Grand Prix event tomorrow. Although I understand there are some other great competitors to give you a, a, a run for the competition tomorrow. Um, we've talked about many ways that cognitive technologies can extend our human capabilities. I have to close by telling you my surprise to see how well this extends to creativity. For example, Watson has learned the language and science of the culinary arts, helping chefs around the world make surprising and delightful flavor combinations that they never would have thought of. In music, Watson has learned rhythm and pitch and instrumentation, as well as the differences in music genres. All of this knowledge combines in algorithms that are running through Watson's neural networks to help artists create original AI-assisted compositions. And most recently, Watson studied up on fashion and materials to collaborate with a designer on the world's first cognitive dress. Let's hear from that designer. We really felt that 
what's just enabled us to do our job better. We fed hundreds of images from our case addresses into Watson and Watson came back and really gave us guidelines of which direction we should go in, which colour stories we should take, and it had been segregated into several different emotions. Seeing one of our dressers that was able to respond and communicate with everyone out there was really something we never thought we'd ever see. So listen, a music fan's not gonna want Watson to make music, but we're going to be delighted by a musician that collaborates with Watson. And a patient isn't gonna wanna rely solely on Watson, but a doctor can help Watson and can use Watson to help make life-changing decisions faster and smarter. Our future is a world where we work with computers to enhance scale, and accelerate our human expertise. And so I invite you, and I ask you, and I challenge you, what will you build with Watson? There we go. Thank you very much.